Warning, this video contains team selection and captain choices which some viewers may find offensive. Hey guys and welcome back to FPL TV. Before looking at how my team got on in game week 14, a quick word about OneFootball who have kindly sponsored this video. The world's best football news app is now even better, relaunching with a fresh new design. Gain access to news, scores and stats from leagues all over the world with a brand new interface that's cleaner, simpler and smarter than ever. As for FPL, you can follow each team in the Premier League and get live updates from all the goals and assists every game week. Download it for free using the link in the description box below. It was another frustrating week to own the double up of Chilwell and Rhys James in game week 14, with James getting ruled out after the deadline had passed, and then Chilwell getting injured after just 9 minutes at home to West Ham for a one pointer. I'm still yet to get a clean sheet from this pair since doubling up, and the one time Chelsea do keep a clean sheet, neither of them were involved. Frustrating stuff. With the absence of Rhys James, in came my first sub Soufal off the bench, and to be fair, I wasn't expecting much from him at Stamford Bridge. Despite those frustrations though, honestly it was the only real negative of game week 14, which ended up being a very good one. My transfer in last week was Charlie Taylor, and he brought home an unexpected assist against Wolves, and in goal, Martinez and Villa kept their third clean sheet on the bounce, so very pleased with that. The bulk of my points last week came from midfield, with all four of Grealish, De Bruyne, Mo Salah and Fernandez doing the business. With the armband on Bruno, I was hoping for a high scoring game in that fixture, and with a 6-2 it couldn't have gone much better. 17 points from Fernandez was my biggest captaincy haul of the season so far, and with the very popular Tottenham duo of Son and Kane finally blanking, it made the haul all the more sweeter. Up front, there was just the one notable return, and that was from who else but Callum Wilson. He only managed two shots inside the box in that game, but importantly, one of them was from the spot, and he stuck that away to take home all three bonus points as well. Newcastle's fixtures really take a turn for the worse now, so he was a player that I was looking to get rid, but with other pressing issues in my team, he may just survive for now. So, for game week 14, it was a very pleasing score of 93, the only real good game week of my season so far. It was one of those game weeks where everything just came together, where the team delivered and so did the captain, and has therefore given me a considerable improvement in overall ranking, moving from 1.5 million to 930k, my first time in the top million all season. Don't get me wrong, 930k is still very far from where I'd like to be, but at least the team is moving in the right direction now, and hopefully this can continue. Let's move on to game week 15 now, and check out my transfers as well as my potential team lineup. Also, if you enjoy the content here at FPL TV, then be sure to leave a like and most importantly get subscribed. You can also hit the notification bell so you always know when a new video goes live. Although Ben Chilwell's injury doesn't sound too serious, my concern is it could rule him out for a week or two. In usual circumstances, this wouldn't be too bad, but because games are coming thick and fast over the Christmas period, I'm not too keen on holding a £6 million defender and then potentially having them miss two or three game weeks, so I've chosen to sell him for now. The replacement that I really wanted for Chilwell is Andy Robertson, with the Reds facing West Brom and then Newcastle in the next two games, two very good chances for clean sheets. Not to mention a nice double game week for Liverpool in game week 19, and I definitely want him for that one. The only problem here is that I didn't have quite enough cash in the bank to make this upgrade, and therefore I've had to sell Rhys James as well in order to fund the move, so both of my Chelsea defenders have gone this week. To be honest, I was reluctant to sell Rhys James, because at his price I still really like him as an option. But like I said, I needed the extra money to get Robertson, and I don't have any clarity on James's fitness either. Chelsea too have a double game week in game week 19, so perhaps I can look to get one of them back in for then. As for Rhys James's replacement, I wanted to buy a Man City defender, and the only one I can afford is John Stones at a budget 4.9 million. It is a gamble for me, because once again I'm tempting fate with Pep Guardiola's rotation, just like I did with Cancelo a few game weeks back. But Man City's fixtures are very favourable until game week 23 now, and they have kept clean sheets in four of the last five games, all of which John Stones has played in. Granted, he's bound to miss a game here or there, 
but for the most part I'm hoping he'll play the majority and hopefully pick up some clean sheets for a budget price along the way. Providing I've got at least one decent bit of bench cover in FPL, then I'm willing to take the risk. So those are my two free transfers this week, and although it's underwhelming to blow two transfers on defenders, I'm happy at least to have Robertson in the squad for the first time this season, a player that I always like owning in FPL. With those two free transfers now locked in, let's see how the team is currently lining up. There's home fixtures right across the board in defence, with my back line having home games against West Brom, Palace, Brighton and Newcastle. Four very good chances of clean sheets there, I think. As mentioned earlier, with Newcastle's fixtures now taking a turn, Callum Wilson is probably the real weak link in my side this week, with an away fixture to Man City looking a very difficult task for returns. The Magpies then face Liverpool and Leicester in the following two games, so as much as I'd like to see him get some points, I'll probably just have to hope for more penalties if I keep him. On the bench, I do have Burnley's Charlie Taylor away to Leeds, and therefore I've got the option to play him over Callum Wilson this week, but I'm not sure. Leeds are in good goal scoring form at the moment, and I'm the type of manager that usually likes to back the attacker over the defender, so that's still a 50-50 that I'm weighing up this week. For the captaincy, this week is probably going to be very straightforward. It was the absolute perfect outcome for those of us with Mo Salah last week, because not only did he score a 16-pointer from the bench, but now we know he's also well rested for a tantalising home fixture against a struggling West Brom. Liverpool's record at Anfield speaks for itself, as does Mo Salah's record, so for game week 15 I'm almost certain it'll be with the Egyptian. My only other slight consideration this week is De Bruyne, simply because I know he'll be a big differential in terms of captaincy, because many will have lost faith in him after a few underwhelming game weeks. And on the off chance that Mo Salah were to disappoint, then captaining the Belgian could really be a gamble worth taking. Man City have put some big scores past Newcastle in years gone by, and that's why I have considered giving him the armband. But it's likely I'll remain sensible and captain Mo Salah, especially because at least with him we know for certain that he's going to start. And with De Bruyne, while well, City have to play twice in three days, and maybe he is due a rest soon. So that's how my team currently lines up for game week 15. But if there's any other changes, or if I decide to move Charlie Taylor in for Callum Wilson this week, then as always, you can find my final team lineup over on Twitter shortly before the game week deadline. Because game week 16 then comes literally the day after game week 15, there's a chance I won't get a team video out in time for that one. So just in case, the transfer plans for game week 16 will be to look to get a Spurs attacker back into the side. From game week 16 onwards, Tottenham face Fulham, Leeds and Sheffield United in three of their next four games, so I don't want to head into those fixtures without any of their players. The plan is to try and get Son Heung-min back for game week 16 onwards, and that can either be done with a straight swap for Kevin De Bruyne, or perhaps taking a minus 4 hit, downgrading Callum Wilson, and then upgrading Jack Grealish to Son instead. As mentioned just now, I'll also be posting game week 16's team over on Twitter as well, even if there isn't a video to support it. Good luck to you all for the upcoming game weeks, FPR responsibly, enjoy your holidays, and I'll catch you all very soon.